All right, everyone, welcome to the Norwich podcast. Today I'm here with James, which you guys know as Kicking Mustang. Welcome, James, to the podcast. Thanks for having me on, Chris. How are you doing, mate? Doing great, doing great. So, how's, how's life you in guys Austria? I mean, it's, uh, how is life in Austria? Um, man, it's are cold you, and miserable. There's no airsoft games. But you know, are you guys locked down? Is Austria locked down, so you've got no airsoft? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. There's no airsoft going on. I mean, you can go out and just, you know, shoot some cans, but you, you're you not going to shoot anyone, really. Or at it's least not in a legal way. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's pretty bad. So, yeah, James, maybe you can give... The community, I mean, most people will know you anyways, but I think it's good if you, you know, introduce yourself real quick, who you are, what people know you for and where you're heading. Um, yeah, my name's Kiki Mustang, AKA James Bailey. And I'm from the UK. I run a uh, channel called Kiki Mustang and I am an airsoft sniper. I specialized in ghillie sniping and I like stealth, hide and seek. And I've been playing airsoft since 2010. I started my channel uh, airsoft um, content probably 2016 ish something like that I started off doing live streams on Facebook with a little bit of gameplay but then I really put my foot down on the gameplay content I guess towards the end of 2017 and I've been um, putting out gameplays since then really so that's that's me I think that's not everything I think you should also mention that you are basically I would, I would consider you a community leader like of the crafting community or part of the crafting community as well. Like you have a very strong following there. And then also you uh, recently released a, a full line of products, actually. Maybe you can talk about this as sure. well really quick. Sure. Yeah. Um, we started, um, well, I, I guess my, my style of ghillie suit um, is, I would call it a leaf suit. And it's not, it's very different to a traditional ghillie suit which tends to be uh, a hood and a cloak and it's designed for mostly lying down statically but we 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 realized pretty pretty quickly that those as you've touched on in some of your older videos ghillie suits quite traditional ghillie suits are quite prohibitive they slow you down they're bulky they can be hot they get caught in bushes but we started using leaf suits seriously in airsoft i guess i i really picked up on them in 2014 and then um, yeah, built, built the crafting. So you get 360 degree concealment with a, with a full leaf suit. They're very lightweight, very mobile. And around the leaf suits, I started, and there was a lot of interest in it. It was quite unusual at the time when I was doing it. And we built a, a, a community around leaf suit and ghillie suit crafting and that style of gameplay, that stealth style of gameplay. And I run a Facebook group called Sniper Ops. And we've got probably about eight and a half thousand members, something like that. And very, um, very dedicated into into the crafting, the the art of stealth gameplay, not just with rifles. You know, this could be with MK MP23 pistols, HPA guns. It's not just about long range shooting. It's uh, it's the stealth style of gameplay, and there's there's a real passionate community around that that we've we've built up. And in about a year and a half ago or so, I had an opportunity to uh, work with a tailor. Um, who was um, who? Who had connections with the Russian military and was a very expert um, tailor. And I could put my ideas across through my my design ideas through them. And I put together the KMCS, which is a Kiki Mustang concealment system, which is a leaf suit, but it's got all the features that I felt we needed and weren't available. So a number of things like the randomised leaf patterns. Um, the ability to add natural veg onto it, very strong materials as well. The only the only suits that were available at the time were quite fragile. They would tear easily in the thorns. You couldn't crawl in them, whereas the KMCS, um, I'm able to use a material that's strong, robust, lightweight, um, very breathable, so I can use it in any environment. So you can wear it over thick, heavy clothes for cold weather, or I could. you could even use it in the desert out in texas or in spain i played in temperatures up to the mid 40 degree c's in the kmcs and um, it's a it's very adaptable system it's not just for woodland it can be used in um, rocky mountain areas even urban areas i've got a new line that's coming out this month called the dead zone which is going to be useful in mountain quarry fields even urban fields so um yeah that's that's what i'm doing it's uh 
it's uh, yeah I, I love hide and seek i love gillies i love um i love sneaking about and i love scaring the shit out of people when i'm playing airsoft mm. I think everyone does that actually. Like everyone likes the idea of you know not being seen in airsoft and especially taking people down and just enjoying like this frustration in people's faces and this confusion in people's faces. But I think yeah. you've been the one who has really been pushing it, but then not just pushing it, but also um, you know putting it into a public space, making it accessible to people, teaching them. Um, you know, how all of that works and, you know, disregarding who came up with all of this, you really put it, you really made it into a big thing. And mm. it is, this is what I'm seeing. I see you kind of like, you know, guiding the, the sniper ops community, which is, you know, really big, a very active community, which I'm following as well, personally. Yeah. I'm glad you're in there. I'm, I'm glad you're in the community. I'd, I'd like, it'd be cool if you, if you contributed a little bit more, you know, in there, cause I know you're in there and I know you're, you're watching the post. I'm, I'm it'd be cool reading, if you yeah. gave a bit more. I've yeah, always yeah. been a read in those communities. Yeah. Yeah. But I was just wondering because you basically those people, they really see you as a, like a strong leading figure and they do kind of follow what you recommend. So if you say, okay, this is, this is cool. I tried this, I tried that. Like people have a, a huge trust into what you tell them and you can kind of shape and direct where this whole community is basically going. So I was wondering yeah. where you, where you're heading with it and what is kind of like, what, what is your goal with all of this? Tough question. That one. Um, my my goal like in ev everything i do in life my goal is to enjoy what i do chris that's that's it i don't i'm not trying i'm not trying to sell more or sell anything not really I, there i have a suit that is for sale but i believe in it i believe it is the best leaf suit on the market i believe it's the i think it's the best best concealment system in, in the world i think it's the best materials and it's not i don't feel i have to sell it hard because i believe it's the best thing where am I going with it? I, I just want to continue enjoying it. As as you when you make content, it's hard work making content. You know, it's hard work to run a channel, mm. and the the hardest thing is to to stay motivated to put out a video every week, to do a live stream every week, to to press go live on your Instagram, to speak to your followers, to 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 stay passionate. That's my goal: is to continue enjoying doing what I do, and I believe everything else will just just come naturally. Um, I'm not looking for sales. I'm not looking to grow subscribers. I'm not looking. I'm not looking for viral videos, but I enjoy the process of making viral videos. I enjoy the challenge of it, but I'm not. I'm not driven. If I don't get a viral video, it doesn't affect how I'm. How I feel about making the content. I mm -hmm. want to. When, when I this the hardest part for me when I make content is when I press go live, and I put it out and it's finished and it's gone. A lot of people, yeah. they get their enjoyment out of watching the views and watching the comments and watching what happens afterwards. For me, that's almost the end of the process. I enjoy putting it together and, and editing and making the film and the playing and the planning. That, for me, my goal mm -hmm. is to stay focused on that and enjoy enjoy this, this game of hide-and-seek and enjoy sharing mm -hmm. it and being able to put across that passion for hide-and-seek in my, in my content and to be able to connect with people connect with people who enjoy that same style and and yeah be, be around people who share the same passion as me that's that's my goal mm. I, i'm surprised to hear that you you didn't set like a certain target for yourself or something because like if you say it's, it's just a process of things i think it's it's both sides really. at least that that's what it's for me because i do enjoy making these videos i do enjoy playing as of the detail but still like when we you know, look at thumbnail designs, for example, like both you and me, we do try to make them attractive to an audience, which does I love show that. that it's fun though, isn't it? Making thumbnails is fun. Like what's going to work? Yeah, what's going to grab people's attention? Yeah. Is yeah. It? And it there's is, almost, I've, sometimes I've got, I can see it sometimes in, in your, in some, especially some of your older thumbs, there's a little, uh, there's, there's a little uh, sprinkle of naughtiness on it. And there's like, this is a bit mischievous and let's grab some people's attention. And no. I, I think these days your thumbs are a little bit more vanilla. They're not we so do, naughty. Yeah. We, some we of the did older go ones away are... from the extreme side of things. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They work um, less, but I think they give a more, especially now that it's kind of like becoming a, you know, it's becoming a company and it's, it's not about trying to just get as many views as possible. It's more like, uh, okay, now there's a lot of, 
you know, there's people working here and they we, we've designed it here and we don't want to just go yeah. after fuse. We actually just want to kind of represent what, what this company really does. And yeah, yeah you have, if we you go have too edgy on the thumbnails, well. I yeah. feel like it's, it's going in the wrong direction. Then. You have responsibilities. Do, do you think, do you think that essentially your, your company relies on sales? You've got people's jobs and to keep your company yeah, moving exactly. and growing, you have to drive your sales. Do you think that perhaps sales or the going for sales can restrict creativity or limit your um, the potential of your videos reaching a wider market because you are perhaps more absolutely. cautious? Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. How do you balance that? But, 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 but I think that, that that's not the only limitation. I think it's about, uh, you know, also how do you want to appear? Because, you know, maybe if you would just play naked airsoft or maybe just in underwear, uh, that could grab some attention. But is this is this the image that you want to put out on the internet about maybe yourself or maybe of a, a company, which is, you know, basically a group of people working for the same goal? Like you don't want to do that. So it's not it's yeah. not feud driven anymore. Uh, yeah, that's that's what yeah. changed. No, no, but yeah, if, a, if you yeah, say if you say you you didn't set a, you didn't set a goal for yourself, where where do you see it yeah. heading? Because I think it's a it's a rapidly growing community. When I man, like five years ago, when when this started, I haven't seen a single leaf suit sniper anywhere, basically. And it's like it's slowly coming. I think in in the areas where I play, it's still not that popular like people know about it but they don't really practice it themselves We're also because you. It, you know it it takes energy and it takes time to to craft the suits but mm -hmm. it's coming you know i every mm -hmm. once in a while there's like 100 players on the field and there's like one or maybe two guys who you know they, they crafted their own suits it's, it's a sensation like there's this sensation when you're when you're invisible i mean as, as you, you you know what it's like to wear a ghillie suit hmm. and when you get that that sensation the bull sniper in spain He's just done a new video that's coming out. I'm not sure it's today or Wednesday. I, I can't remember it's coming out. But he sent me the preview of it. And he's saying, wow, this is the first time I've really done stealth play. And he's got the foot, he's got the KMCS, he's crafted it. He's done a really good job on it. And he's gone mm. and hidden in some in some trees and some really fun locations. And he's shooting people. And their reactions are like, oh my God, friendly fire again. And they're looking around all confused. And he's no. saying this is the best feeling he's had playing airsoft. That that sensation, and, and you get in your in your I think some of the things that really caught the attention of your videos, your earlier videos when you first blew up, and um, the friend Va 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 Vavum, the, the earlier guy, who did the Bavanil. first scope cam. Bavanil. 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 So you get this sensation when you're watching it of you're watching people through the crosshairs. They're looking around. Yeah. They you're, you're almost like a voyeur looking at them, and then you hit them, and there's this confusion. And once yeah. you've got once you've got that sensation of being invisible, it's like the ultimate superpower and being able to hit people and they can't see you and can't hit you back. And so quickly, if you make one mistake, it flicks from being you being the hunter to the hunted and it all goes. And it, it's such a, a, an amazing moment when you get into it. So it's inevitable, I think, that this leaf suit thing and the stealth gameplay is going to keep on growing because once people try it and they realize how effective and what an amazing sensation it is, People get hooked on it, and it's it's a, it's yeah. a difficult feeling to be, and it's why we, you and I, and other snipers love sniping. That sensation of being able to hit people and they don't know where you're hitting them from. It's an amazing feeling. Yeah, I absolutely agree. So, what do you think is going to happen? Do you think it's going to become it's going to get to a point where you you show up to a field and just everyone is wearing a leaf suit? Do you think this could happen? That it's like because when you look at at sports like let's say paintball, okay. Camouflage makes no sense. People are moving fast. It's fast paced. They yeah, wear what field, makes sense, yeah, right? Yeah. They, they wear what makes sense. And in Airsoft, uh, we wear camouflage, which is designed for long range, basically. Like we wear military mm -hmm. camouflage, which is designed to work at, you know, larger ranges than we are shooting, actually. Mm -hmm. So going into this direction of, you know, where engagement really happens in Airsoft, which is, what is it? Like five to 60 meters on average? Mm -hmm. Maybe that's just you know the way forward. It could become something that everyone is wearing. For sure, if you want to be effective, I I I don't see any drawback. If you just buy a quality leaf suit, a lightweight quality leaf suit, it adds a level of concealment to your game. Now, if you're moving, it doesn't matter how good your concealment is, you are going to be noticed. Yeah. But it just gives you that ability to stop 
in and if you know what you look like and how you fit into the environment you can stop in the right area and you vanish that's a that's a, a superpower that you can have on the airsoft field i if you want to be effective at airsoft i don't see any reason why you wouldn't wear some kind of very lightweight modern leaf suit to add to your abilities as a airsoft player so will we see more and more i, I think so i think it's inevitable because it is so People want to be better at the game. Why do people spend loads of money on guns? There's two reasons. They either want to have a better gun or they want to have look cool or have a cool gun. So if people yeah. want to be effective, they'll probably go down the leafy suit. If they want to be cool, yeah. they'll wear jeans and plate carriers and dress up like Sylvester Stallone or whatever, you know, or Special <laughs> Ops or SAS or wear black yeah, in the woods, you know, whatever. So um, yeah. but there's, there's something for everybody in Airsoft, isn't there, you know? Uh, well, I could always argue that it, it depends on the field. Like if you play in, in, a, in a pure CQP field, maybe a leaf suit is, you know, I'm talking like CQP, CQP. You can't even go outdoor. There's not a single single bloody mm. bush around. Yeah, yeah. In CQP, there's no point there. But when I went, when I went uh, to Tyrrell, people said yeah. to me, Why, you won't, there's no point taking the leaf suit. You're not going to get used to it. But it was. Like, even though it's a small field, how big's is Tyrrell? Like 100 meters. It's 100 meters square, isn't it? It's not huge. Yeah. Uh, but even there, times you, yeah. So even there, just little, you just need to find little areas, you know, in in the rubble, or in the rubbish, or there's little bits of bushes, or you know, on on the hillsides, yeah. or in, there's always somewhere you can use you can use a, a um, concealment there. I do agree. As as soon as there's a certain, like even a small amount of vegetation, it can be an advantage. Huh? Yeah. How, how have you found your? Because you you just brought your leaves out, which are uh, which are good. I really I think you've done a really good job in there. You found um. Because when I dis discovered discovered uh, the sneaky leaves back in 2015, which is what yeah. uh, they were great, and I bought up a huge batch of them. Um, Skirm Shop bought up what, whatever was remaining of them, and mm. I've kind of looked ever since for trying to find a source of making something on par with those. I haven't found anything. I think your leaves are the closest we've we've got. So you've done a great job. Where are you finding you're selling the most of those to? What, what, what part of the world? Oh, I would have to look into it. I have to look into I'll be, it. I'd be interested. I would assume, I mean, actually, I didn't look into it. I would assume they're okay because that's where those people are, but I man, I don't know. Yeah, the greens I, are I good. Those green colors you've got are great. Yeah, the greens are great for summer. Those green colors yeah. are quite hard to achieve. Yeah. Man, we've, we've yeah. had a, a Pantone color set in our hands, and I was just running around in the forest and I was like, that's a good color. That's a good color. Yeah. And I, I should good show job. you the picture. Man, it, was, it was actually so much fun to create those, those colors. It was, mm -hmm. it was really fun. It was really fun. And you get yeah, samples from the factories and you look at them and they go like, ah, they're too bloody dark. Like you can see it doesn't look like a real one. Mm. So it's like revision over revision over revision at some point that it's kind yeah. of worked out. You guys should do more behind the scenes vlogs and just like stuff with you guys messing around because you've got, how many people are working for you now? I think we're at 41 now. That's amazing. That's amazing what you're doing over there. Um, when we came over earlier this year for the Austrian thing, and you guys, we yeah. all went down to the spa and stuff. It was such a good atmosphere with your yeah, your exactly. staff and things. And I, I still, we we st we still look back at that. Actually, but did do you think did do you think you had COVID back then? This was before the COVID thing had taken off. And when we all got back from Austria, we were all sick as dogs. Like we were all really ill. <laughs> do you think? Oh, really? Do you think that we caught it? Because you were ill that you were ill that weekend as well, weren't you? I was super sick. Do you remember? Sick, yeah. Yeah. During the launch event, I was so sick that I, I mm -hmm. was like, okay, we invited 20 influencers and there's all those, all those followers who want to see what's coming. And I'm mm -hmm. just, I'm just dead inside. Yeah. Like I felt so shit on this weekend. But co mm -hmm. Corona wasn't the thing back then. I think it's no. like a month later. But not was, officially at it least. Was uh, not officially. So we, th me and Cam Man and Nico, all three of us were sick like you were. For weeks afterwards when we got back and we all think that we caught it off you and we all think we've had it already from you as it was around the time actually, it was taken off what, what do you reckon possible isn't it it could actually be because the, the thing is that like right before the launch event i was i think the months before the launch event i was in china in taiwan and in hong kong for like an entire month straight so it could definitely be that i just Imported. <laughs> Maybe it was the first one in Austria, you know? <laughs> we, we should rename it the, the SSG-19. It's not COVID-19, <laughs> it's SSG-19. Super SSV-19, super, super, super sniper virus-19. Yeah, uh, well. <laughs> but anyway, what, what I'm saying is that, that what you guys do, the whole atmosphere around the whole thing and the, the social you guys have and the community you have, I think a lot of people would love to see even more behind the scenes goings on 
just just fun and the fun you guys have and the, the, oh, the organization we, and doing stuff we would actually enjoy to you know every every day when i want to make stories like oh another day okay let's make some stories man i see all those things around that we could make stories of but when you develop when you make something right you, you start a project and about one and a half years later it hits the market and you mm -hmm. just don't want to show what you're making because you you don't want to show the competition and mm. ah, it's it's such a conflict actually i would love to show what we're working on because the, the, the stuff that's right now in at knowledge.com is basically stuff that i still made which was you know me and and, and media media people service people and, and purchasing but now instead of me we have a team of 12 full-time developers so we basically work like the scale of development is 12 times as big as it used to be. So we work on a million trillion things, but they all will come, you know, in half a year, mm. a year, and we can't really display it yet. But there's a, there's a yeah, lot of stuff coming. But there, I guess there's a conflict there, yeah, as you say, there's, it's conflict, there's a fear that you're going to show other people what you're doing. But at the, same, at the same time, perhaps there's an argument that if you do show it through social media, the internet never forgets. And if, you, if you're doing something first and you put it out there, I've, I've had this discussion with a number of people who are, putting out, who are producing products. I've always said that it doesn't matter what, it doesn't matter about copyrights or patents or anything, as long as it's all on the internet and, and you document the whole process, because then everyone knows that who did it first and you're the original person. Oh. And it's always there forever. So I, I think there is a, I think there's an argument that you guys could do more, but I'd, I'd like to see more of what you guys are doing anyway. I think a lot of people would. Uh, we do record it and we do push it out through social media, usually after the launch, like kind of like what happened before, mm. which then yeah. it's kind of too late. I get that. Yeah, we, I will think about it. Yeah. Man, I actually wrote down some, some topics that I would like to talk about. And okay. one is um, the ASF community and it being toxic sometimes. And I was wondering what's your... What's your opinion on it? And also, you know, why is it like this? And is it actually worse than it is in other sports? What, what would you say? I think there is a problem within Facebook groups in general. I don't think it's just in Airsoft. I think um, no matter what community you're in, there are problems in, in that social media generates. Why does social media and Facebook groups especially generate this toxicity? I think it's because and someone someone put a post up in Sniper Ops this morning, um, and he was saying, and his post was along the lines of, "This is an unpopular opinion, but I like Norwich's products. I think he's doing a great job." Essentially, that's what the post was. Mm, I've I, seen it. My, actually. I've read that yeah, today, money. <laughs> my, my 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 reply to him was, "You're wrong. It's not an unpopular opinion. It's just a quiet opinion." Mm. What I mean by that is social media and facebook groups especially the loudest most aggressive voices and the most determined voices tend to come across the most and the moderate majority generally either get fed up and leave the group or they don't contribute to it and if they don't contribute to it the facebook algo then won't show them the content anyway because facebook knows that they're not interacting and typing and speaking to it engaging, yeah. so it doesn't get shown and they don't engage so they don't see it as much and they don't share their opinions so it tends to be echo chambers of very loud um people that generate a reaction and that is what causes some of the problems and then you get people on social media when you get and you get people um such as um we saw it recently on um, Instagram with Jet Desert Fox and Unicorn Leah calling you out and other content creators for using language that they deem to be immoral or giving Airsoft a bad reputation or endangering the sport. So by what they're doing there is trying to come up with some sort of moral framework that makes them seem better than other people. That, now I don't know whether they're doing that on purpose I don't actually, I don't think they have any bad intentions and it's not a personal beef, but it's a something that I see occurring all over social media, whether it's in airsoft or other things, other social communities or social issues where people virtue signal and they try to gain some kind of moral upper hand on other people and they create a them and us 
framework. Mm -hmm. We care about Airsoft more than those people. If you're not with us, you're bad for Airsoft. And that framework is getting more and more common within Airsoft. And they're trying to control language, control behavior, such as if it's headshots, if it's using the word deadly sniper or savage headshot or even rulings like you can't shoot someone within one meter. If you're shooting someone within one meter, you're ungentlemanly. This is a gentleman sport. If you do this, you're not a gentleman. Therefore, you're bad for us and we don't agree with your behavior. You're a bad person. They create this very divisive environment. And that is what's happening at the moment within Facebook groups and on social media. And I think it's a quite a dangerous situation and communities, not just airsoft, but communities are becoming divided because of this moral framework that this is being, being constructed. And that's what I think is happening. What always surprised me is that when you go to a field, like first you, you spend your week, okay, let's say on social media to a certain degree, you read what people are writing, you see what people are commenting and you would imagine that if you go to a field, like there's just a fist fight going on. But when you actually go into a field, I think an airsoft field is a fairly, you know, considering that people are shooting each other and that it inflicts pain and there's like a lot of potential for conflict, it's a quite peaceful environment where people tend to help each other. Yeah. And I sometimes wonder that, you know, let's say you want to get into airsoft, okay? You man, you research, you know, you do, you look at a couple of videos and then you start entering those communities and all you see is just fights. It's just fights yeah. about opinions. And as, it's I, not, I always represent, it's not representative this... of reality, is it? It's not representative yeah, of what's exactly, really going exactly. on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if, if may, may, case, maybe, I, I, maybe I'm guilty of exaggerating the drama when it, because ha when it happens, I don't shy away from it. So if you and I are at different ends of the spectrum. You're now and you feel you're in a position of responsibility because of a company. Your, your goal is to advance your company and you feel a responsibility to your staff. So you have to structure your content in such a way that you don't want to have drama or you don't want to have anything that's got bad connotations. Whereas me, if something happens on the gameplay field, I've, my filmmaking brain is like, bang, that's funny, or bang, that's cool, yeah, or that's it, drama. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I mean, I'll, I can see that. I, I see that, yeah. And I yeah. don't see, I, I don't see, this is the thing, right? We, we, we're talking about toxic communities, right? But I don't see any evidence that using this drama, using these um, moments, or using, say, even the headshot thing, like right? this weekend I was at an event, and for some reason, maybe it's because I was there, maybe it was just coincidence, but the owner of the field made a big deal about headshots and he made everyone in the briefing say, well, do you agree to not shooting anyone in the head deliberately on purpose? And they'll go, yes, yes, dad, no problem. And then of course, in the field, a few people got flipped in the face and there was moaning all day long. You can't do that. You're, 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 you shot me in the face and you signed a waiver that said no headshots. So. But do I see that as being toxic by showing that? Or is it just something that happened? Like, I don't see that. The point I'm trying to make is I don't see any bad side effects in that. I look at comments. I look at discussions. I look at something that's provocative. It's thought, you know, it's thought provoking. Should you do headshots or not in, head, in Airsoft? People have opinions. They talk about it. Does it, is that toxic or is it just a discussion? Is it a heated debate? Does it have a bad impact on airsoft? And should a content creator have a responsibility? Like you feel your responsibility is to your company. People sometimes say to me, you have a responsibility as an ambassador of airsoft. You shouldn't show this bad stuff. Well, why not? Why is it bad for airsoft? Where's the proof? I could show you thousands of people saying how amazing it is they've discovered airsoft through my videos i think there's really two sides to it i mean first of all like making videos that are polarizing and like absolutely outrageous like people are gonna watch it it grows the sport it gets the sport more attention then you could argue puts it into a bad light maybe i mean that's like yeah. a point we could fight about but there's also one more thing and that is what do you want airsoft to become because you know, airsoft could be done in a way where we say, let's lower the true limits. 
let's go for one tool on sniper rifles and 0.5 tools on AEGs. So now we can make it accessible to any person. Yeah, it could be could be kids, the market, the maybe maybe even girls start start coming to the field. But then and no headshots, right? So we can you can. Soften it's it, yeah. it's easy on the masses, right? It's easy on the masses. We can grow the sport, but do you want the sport to become this? The market decides. The market decides, though. If if a field wants to do those rules, do those rules, and then see what happens. People either go to it or they won't. And the market decides. If the entire country, the entire it, the whole of England, every airsoft field decided to ban headshots or headshots didn't count, I'd leave the country. I'd move. I'd sell my house. I'd move to Austria. I'd move to Poland. <laughs> but how, how many people would do that? How many people would do that? How many people would would leave a country for taking not many. Man, but man, man, another, man. but another field would open. Then me, me and Camman have talked about this, right? We've we've seen a couple of locations that we could perhaps run a field at. There's there's a couple of problems. The first, the biggest problem is we don't want to deal with all the dickheads because it would be an absolute nightmare to run a field. But if we did run a field, we would call it headshot airsoft. And we would have yeah. higher limits. And if the insurance said 370 FPS on point twos, we would chrono everything on point twos just to, because some people want to play higher limits. Some people want to dual creep mm. their guns. We'd, we'd, we'd do that because it's within the rules. It's within the insurance waivers. And it would be take responsibility for your own safety. Don't, no, no moaning. You know, it, it, would, it would be hard, you know, how Airsoft used to be years ago. And that's, that's how we'd do it. And the market would decide. Either people would go, yes, we want to get involved in that, or no, we wouldn't. And I believe the market would always, you know, provide for people if there's demand for it eventually. So, yeah. There is, you know, that's actually funny because I did write down, I did write down a few questions where I thought, you know, I would like to, have, I would just like to hear your opinion on it. And one was, because what you're saying is, you know, making a field, you're still restricted by the, by the, by the laws of the country, right? Mm -hmm. You don't have full uh -huh. full hand on you know what you want to do. So I was wondering, imagine you you rule a country, okay? You're in a position of ruling a country and you set the laws and the population is just hundred percent behind you. But at the same time, you also you're also running a field and the market is big enough that airsoft the airsoft industry would actually follow the laws of this country. So there's no limitations, right? If you say mm -hmm. I want AHEs to shoot five tools on twenty five rounds per second. The industry would make it for this market. Mm -hmm. So, how would your perfect, how would your perfect country and field look like? What would be different to the UK as a community? Like two limits, MET. Yeah, two um, limits. They're too low. Too low. Everywhere I've played airsoft, the higher the dual yeah. limits, the less moaning there is, because people kind of expect it. You know, they expect they're going to get hurt, and people go to play the game because they know it's going to get hurt. So. I would have, I think some of the US rules are pretty close to what I, I like. I think um, something like 1.7 duels, something like that for a, a, an assault rifle is, you know, with no MER. I think mm. that would be semi-auto. I think full auto, like one duel for SMGs. And I think DMRs, I don't know, two and a half duels and snipers, three and a half duels, something like that, you know. Um, yeah. And I think there's no, you know, it's up to people what they wear on their face. Every, like in life, I, I really believe in life that you should take responsibility for everything you do. I don't think you should be relying on laws or government or anybody to protect you within reason. Obviously, you need boundaries. But I think mm -hmm. if you want to go and play a sport, if you want to go and play football and you don't want to wear shin pads, that's your choice. You're going to get your shins raked. If you want to play rugby and don't want to wear a padded head, you're going to get knocked out at some point. If you want to play airsoft and you don't want to wear face protection, you're going to get hit in the face. Don't complain about it. It is your choice. And it's all about personal responsibility. Have as few rules as possible. And you just have a framework where people can come. And first rule is no moaning. Just don't, don't, don't moan. Like it at Tyrrell. I remember when I went to Tyrrell, it was really striking at first. The, the briefing, the, I remember the very first thing they said at Tyrrell was, right, you're going to get shot. No moaning. If you don't, if you're going to moan, moo, and you made a funny face about moaning, you can go home and tell your mummy. There was no moaning that day because the framework was there that we're not interested in moaning. That's the biggest issue in the UK at the moment. People moaning about being shot. That's got, they've got to stop that. And to stop that, I think higher dual limits and telling people it's up to them what they were. It's, fu it's funny, isn't it? I think higher dual limits stop people moaning. I, I really do, in my experience. Uh, if you you know if there's enough pain you you don't want anymore you just you just suffer you accept it yeah <laughs> you what, what about you Wait, where's where's the best place you played airsoft where, where did you enjoy it the most because russia was crazy 
obviously you've got your local. Man, I would rules, say but... I would say Austria. I would actually say Austria. I I'm not a patriotic person by any means, but man, I you know I try to find cheaters to make a cheater video. I just can't. Not I just can't do it. I yeah. if, if you look at my YouTube channel, I don't have I. It's not that I don't have cheater videos because you know I, I'm the good guy and I'm trying to put show the best of the sports. It, there's just no cheaters here. I just can't find any cheaters. So that's the first thing. Then, but at, at Tyrrell, when, when you play at Tyrrell, where you play at Tyrrell, it's quite close range, isn't it? And the power yeah. limits uh, are are towards the higher end of the world. Of yeah, the you're, you're running three tools on a sniper rifle. I think 450 yeah. FPS. So that's like what 1.8 yeah. tools. Yeah. On semi, so it punches. It's hard to cheat when yeah. you get smashed. When you get smashed at three jewels, and there's no like, as if you if you have a sniper at Tyrrell, there is probably not a single spot on the map that you can't hit with your sniper. So when you get you hit, people feel it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's yeah, interesting. But I, but I was always wondering because I, man, I I talked to to Evik at so so the guy who's running Evik Evik Chang. Um, I was talking about him, how Airsoft could develop and how it could become something bigger. And this was like a pure like business aspect of things. So this was not how could the sport be the best for us as the players, but more like a, mm. how could it become something bigger than in Israel? How could it become something like soccer or, you know, what's the limitations? And what he was saying is, man, the true limits need to go down. And he was even considering because he like he has a huge influence basically in America and he has, you know, he's even financing multiple fields and so on. He was thinking about just dropping the tool limit down to down to one tool how it is in Japan. At least for HEs. I have no words. <laughs> yeah. Can't say anything to that mate. Can't say anything. So this this is the difference, right? This is this is somebody who perhaps wants maybe their business may I, I don't know either I don't really know much about Evic, but perhaps their business is plateaued maybe they want the industry maybe they want the sport to become bigger because once you get to a certain size they need to yeah. Yeah. there's only so much you can sell to people without the so you're thinking right how am i going to sell more products let's make the sport bigger let's get the new york exactly. times involved how are we going to sell more tickets let's get vice magazine involved that's a great idea um yeah. exactly that and that's why i asked this question this way i was like do you want airsoft to become bigger or no, do you no, want I'm no it interest. to become something that that you no interest. idealize in airsoft because no interest, i think no. that that no interest. because that's because that's what it is for you because if you, if you if you say headshots are not a bad thing it maybe doesn't make the sport bigger but it makes it more the way that you think it's it's most enjoyable to play with and i absolutely agree on this yeah, yeah. it goes, goes I, back I to what hate... my motivation is it goes back to my motivation i just want to enjoy i mean there's there's two prongs to me there's the airsofter and when I get on that field, I want to play and I want to, I want to, I want to win. And I want to meet people who are as good or better than me. And I'm going to have a really competitive day. And then the other prong is I want to make movies. So I've got these two prongs to my fork and yeah. I enjoy both equally. I can do one without the other. I'm, I love making just movies anyway. I love playing airsoft yeah. anyway, but combining them both, I'm just like a, I'm like a cat who's got, got, got the best pot of cream right now i can do both and really enjoy my life and that's all i want to carry on doing i don't care about expanding airsoft i don't feel like i'm an ambassador i don't feel like i don't even feel like i'm a community leader i just have an opinion sometimes I, I i enjoy expressing my opinion i don't express my opinion because i feel a responsibility i express my opinion because i enjoy it i enjoy talking to people about ideas about um society about economics about politics i enjoy that stuff and i just I don't feel any responsibility. I just enjoy doing what I do. And that's 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 what motivates me. So I don't feel any responsibility for growing airsoft. I don't. I hear people talking about it. You know, I say, oh, it's we need to do this for the good of airsoft. We need to get more people into it. We need to get Vice Magazine into it to get more people involved. Why? Well, where's this coming I, I from? I also this... like. I, I absolutely agree. I don't know if growing it is actually better. I'm... I... I it's it's up to them. You know, people can do what they want, but yeah. I, I don't. I don't. I don't buy. I mean, you, you you could argue as soon as uh, like when you look at American Wilson, for example, um, one of the biggest. You know, the, the U.S. market is basically the per country biggest um, airsoft market in the world, and there you have multiple companies. I think you experienced Wilson West, did you? You did, right? 
No, I was, I was booked on. Oh, you couldn't go, right? You couldn't go. And then Corona hit. Someone gave me. Oh, someone yeah. spread Corona around Europe, and then that was it. Yeah. Oops, well, anyways, um, there's a company called American Milsim. I actually had a podcast with the guy yesterday. Funny enough, and like, what, what once you have that big of a market and you have companies trying to give people the best experience possible, it's not so much about the community anymore, like how good the game is, but actually because there's so much money behind it, the game operators. The, the, the people running the game, they can make insane experiences and they do something called a direct action mission, which is totally different to, to what we used to because it's not the typical, okay, there's two sides and let's just smash each other's heads, which is a ton of fun, obviously. That's what we're doing. But they, they put into a scenario. So you get an assault rifle or you bring your own assault rifle and they have like, a, in this example that I experienced, they have a subway train station which is usually used by you know law enforcement for trainings, and they actually put actors into this facility, it's right? Made it. It's funny so you say they, this because a friend of mine doing, is, was planning to do exactly the same thing before Corona hit. Yeah. He's an angel investor, and he was looking to do exactly the same thing in London, and he was going to do um, a Jason Bourne experience. So you, yeah. you, it would be for it would be for high net worth individuals, and they would pay like for a Saturday night in, they'd go to central London, they'd pay like 10 or 15,000 pounds to go mm -hmm. to this experience. And they would go to a casino and it was all full of actors and they were a Jason Bourne secret agent and they didn't know they could do things, but if they wanted to fight someone, they could attack bouncers. They had an airsoft pistol. They could shoot airsoft pistols that people would have glasses on and there'd be missions in the casino. And if they wanted to fight yeah. someone, everyone would be trained professionals so they could try and fight. These, and it, it, was all, it was all ready to go before Corona hit. So yeah, this kind of thing is a yeah experience over. But it becomes about money for the experience of maybe a few in, in, individuals. And when in airsoft industry becomes big, so if you're putting on a a mill sim that is for five hundred plus people, it becomes about creating that experience. It's not. I, I don't know. It's it's a funny it's a funny driver for me because I, I'm I'm not motivated by money. I'm not within the realms of I mean, you need to be practical in what you're doing in life but i find it i find it difficult to get motivated by doing things for money and when things become really huge and you start changing your behavior because you need to make money or you need to cover costs i think it's a, i think it's a it's a shame because I, I get most of my pleasure out of creativity and i'm, I'm a creative person and I, I don't like to feel like that's been tempered so yeah it's interesting it's interesting well, what it just did for American Milsim is it, like this amount of market gave them the opportunity to create something like this. And I think they're not charging a fortune for it. I think it's like, I think it was 50 bucks or something. I mean, you, it only lasts for 30 minutes. So you could argue, you know, 50 bucks for 30 minutes is quite a lot. But the intensity that you go through and, you know, it's really like they, they're using blanks in there. So you basically get shot by it. You feel like you're getting shot, right? There's people screaming. You have... There's like wounded people who look, you know, look like real wounds basically, and you have to, mm. to sanitize them. You... They did it's, something similar it... to that at the Texas Mills that I went to. They, at the nighttime, they had, they called it tier one, I think. And so yeah. everyone who wanted to do that, they wasn't, they weren't playing against another team. The organizers and a few special people were put in place to create a scenario where they went through the buildings and certain things happened. And it was like an experience mm. rather than a competition. And then there was a, a brief beforehand. There was a fake helicopter that dropped people off. And then yeah, afterwards, exactly. they debrief. What did you do? Why did this go wrong? When this thing went wrong, uh, yeah, it's, it's an experience rather than an actual competitive game. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and that's just what it, what it would allow. So I just wonder if Airsoft becomes so much bigger, how would it look like? Because when, when you look at games that start costing money, when you look at Border War, like you're, you're driving on tanks, you're flying with helicopters, you... And it does, I think it does add to the experience. It makes it unique and it's something that you, you just have in your memories. I think it's cool. I really enjoyed that. All of these games. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the, that's, I think that's what we all get out of Airsoft, isn't it? These amazing memories and moments. And yeah. there are certain, there are certain things that happened no matter how many years ago, but there are certain things that happened in games and you capture it. And when, when we, not only do we experience it, we capture it on film. And then to turn yeah. it into a video, and it's there forever. And yeah, it's it's uh, if if, if we could perhaps, I would love yeah, yeah. It, it's 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 it's, it's uh, airsoft can be amazing. Um, how would it look if it's bigger? I, I don't know. It's not really something I've thought about to be honest. 
Hmm. Can it get bigger? Like, do, could, what, could it get as big as computer saying, gaming? I don't. Could it get as big as yeah. computer gaming? I, I don't know. I like what you're saying about this, like those those single moments and those experiences, because I believe that a major motivation for people to play airsoft is to actually after the game tell people what they what they went through it's like tell people why you've been a hero you know you're sitting on a beer and you go like oh you never believe what happened and, and there's this round of people and everyone just cannot wait for the other guy to finish the story so they can tell their own story and just yeah. be the hero yeah. of the group right that's what yeah, it's no, about that's sure. such a big part of the game mm. that, that's why people buy amazing looking gear they they invest all this money into the newest gun because they, they just want to be heroes right they just want to be a weekend hero yeah, no, for sure, mate. No, it's for a big sure. part, it's, huh? Yeah, it's it's um, so this this is what you, you can tell how much you love airsoft, and this is the this is what I I say to, often say to people: the difference between Novridge, the company, is it's run by someone who genuinely loves airsoft, and you can see your eyes light up when you talk about airsoft. And you can this is what I don't when you compare that to normal companies like who runs G and G, who runs. Tokyo Marui, do, do they do they still they're probably middle-aged guys who spend their money going on holidays with their family but do they still play? I don't know maybe they do play airsoft maybe their eyes do light up but one thing you do get with Novridge the company is the guy at the top his eyes light up when he talks about airsoft and I think that's cool as fuck that the industry has that right now I agree yeah. I agree I think that's cool yeah yeah. Okay. Anyways, yeah. James, uh, we are getting close to an hour. Let's cut the podcast here. Um, maybe you can still tell people where they can find you, you know, in case they, they probably know you already, but still, you know, give them a Well, hopefully on. they won't they... find me. Hopefully they won't <laughs> find me because that's how I play the game. But if they want to look at my YouTube videos, uh, youtube.com forward slash kicking Mustang and on Instagram and um, Facebook as well, facebook.com forward slash kicking Mustang. All right, cool, James. Any last words? Anything you want to tell the audience, the listeners? No, I just appreciate well, everybody. I appreciate everybody. I appreciate, I appreciate you for doing these podcasts. I appreciate, yeah, I just, I just appreciate to be able to do what I love, mate. That's, that's it. Every day I appreciate doing what I love. And I think um, <laughs> if I can share that with people, that's all I want to do. Actually, talking about podcasts, um, James is also running a podcast. So for you guys, if you want to check that out, how can, how can they find your podcast? It's on YouTube as well, is it? I've got a there's a I've got a vlog channel. I haven't done as many as I should have been doing recently. Um, but there is, I do have yeah, it's got quite a few vlogs. I think it's on SoundCloud.com forward slash Kicking Mustang, and you can find it on YouTube, uh, iTunes as well. It's probably on another couple of platforms, but I can't remember what they are. But SoundCloud <laughs> and iTunes. Uh, you guys are gonna find it if you if you want to. It's you know Google is your friend. Yeah, there's right, a good podcast then. on there. Yeah, good 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 yeah. conversations on my podcast with some interesting people. All right, James. Then thanks for your time. And My pleasure. see you guys on the next podcast. Take it easy, guys.